Hi everyone, let's take a quick look at what you can expect in Elemental 3.21. Elemental 3.21 is expected to come with the taxonomy query in loop grids and loop carousels, as well as several performance enhancements. And we'll be looking at two major performance enhancements in this video and I will show you how to use the taxonomy query. So let's go ahead and see the performance enhancements. Before we continue, let me show you how you can activate the beta version and test it out for yourself. Make sure that you are using it on a staging site, not on your live site, because it's not the final release and anything can change. So go on that Elementor tools and then go to version control, then the beta tester Change it from Disable to Enable. Then save your changes. Then I'll just refresh the page. And sometimes it may not show up, so you have to go under Plugins, go to your Elementor, and then simply say View Details. And then you see the Update Now button. Sometimes you may have to do it a couple of times, refreshing the page before it shows up. but after a couple of tries and maybe like some few minutes, it should show up. Then when you update it, then you get the latest version with the beta release. But I'm not going to do it in this video because I already have it active on another site. So let's look at some of the updates that have been added. So first, we go back to GitHub and it says that the first one that was added is that now we have more control over the lazy load of background images. So if for whatever reason, an image is being lazy loaded and we don't want it to lazy load we can just simply apply this class name of e nose lazy load and it will stop that image from lazy loading but one thing you have to note is that it can only work on containers it doesn't work on sections and columns so keep that in mind all you have to do is just add this class name and that image will no longer lazy load then the second thing is that now they've improved a lot of the other widgets so that whenever there is no content within the widget, it doesn't display anything on the front end. I think previously some of the widgets already had that, like the heading widget, but now they've expanded it to all the other widgets, so that when there is no content in the widget, especially when you're using a loop grid, and let's see. So here we have an example of a loop grid. This is the old version. And as you can see, I've done a conditional logic on my price to say, if the price is above £25, then don't show that price. You see, all of these are below £25. But this one doesn't have a price because it is above £25. And all I did was I used dynamic shortcodes to do that, but that's not the point of this video. I'll just show you the shortcode I used. Let me show it to you. So basically, all I just did was say... If there is a price and the price is less than £25, then show the price. Otherwise, hide the price. That's what I, I wrote here. So that's what gave me this. And let me exit it. So we get the price showing for some and the price not showing for some others. It can also happen with buttons where maybe you have a button that only when a condition is met, that the link to the button should be clickable. But on other conditions, the link should not be clickable. So what happens is that in the previous version, which is this 3.20, let me go ahead and preview it on the front end. You can see, let me start with the first one, that it is using the text editor widget. So that's why it says Elementor widget text editor. But watch what happens when there is no content there. Let me right click, inspect. You see that, let me open it up. There is still a blank div there. So basically we have an empty div because there is no content, but it's not removing the wrapper divs. The wrapper divs are still there, but the inner content does not exist. So now with Elementor 3.21, we can do the same thing. This is the same layout let me now show it on the front end and you see this time let me start with the first one 
as you can see it is still using the text editor widget and this time it shows when there is content but now let's go to the one that doesn't have content inspect and as you can see it only shows the polo it doesn't show the other one so when there's no content it will not show the other one so only the image now and the the name of the that is the heading widget so this is the improvement that they've made to a lot of the widgets so including the text editor widget the button widget the icon widget and basically all the other widgets the short codes widget the templates widget so it is mostly useful when you have like dynamic data to when there is no dynamic data there you don't want to be just showing empty divs because it's kind of like you get an RSVP to a wedding ceremony but you say yes I am RSVPing so please put my name there but you don't attend that is not very nice for the browser because you are giving the browser extra work to do although it's not that much but that's still extra work for the browser to do to prepare for a div that does not even have any content in it so this is why they've come up with this idea which is like kind of an extension of the display conditions so that whenever there is no text content then the div should not be there at all so it should just disappear so that's an improvement then now let's go ahead and see the taxonomy query and how we can use it so let's say you are running a woocommerce store and you want to display your products on the home page but rather than just displaying the products you want to display the categories of those products so let's say you have a clothing store i want to display that okay i have maybe accessories and then i have maybe the shirts i have skirts and things like that so you want to display them with an image and the title of your taxonomy you don't want to do it manually because the goal of wordpress is that we want to make things dynamic we want to be able to just impute data from one place and then it populates everywhere nicely and we don't have to be worried about having to go into the editor to change anything all you have to do is just come over to your products add a new product and it will dynamically update on the home page and previously we couldn't do it in elementor without having to rely on a third-party plugin like jet engine or dynamic U or other kind of plugins but now we can do it in elementor and you might say okay that doesn't make sense that why will i want to display categories but i'll show you two examples see on the nike store they basically have all their brands of shoes all listed up in their home page so rather than having just display every shoe that they have they just show you the categories which has a featured image of that shoe brand and the name of the brand so when you now click on one of them it should now take you to the page where you can now see the listing of all of those shoes and you can also see a different one on h and m and this time rather than having to show the image and the title they just list some buttons and those buttons link to the archive page so you could create it as just simple buttons so a list of buttons or you could display it as an image and the title which links to the archive page so now let's see how we can do it in elementor so previously if you see on elementor when you try to go to the loop grid and then you try to choose your source it really had source for products or posts but now in elementor 3.21 when you go to add in your loop grid so basically it's a loop grid now you get the option to choose either post products post taxonomy or the product taxonomy so for this example i've already created categories which you can see and those categories have a featured image that is attached to them and so we're going to see how we can now display our list of categories just showing the featured image and the title so let's go back so i'll go to the new one and this time i'll choose the product taxonomy and i'm going to create a new template so let me just save it first and now let me cancel this one and basically i'll create a new template save so when you're using the taxonomy query let me first change it to under settings previews the query 
is product taxonomy, which is right. The preview settings is going to preview one of my products. So make sure you change this so that you can easily see what is going on. Then the widgets you can use currently are, let me just create a container. So now let me make sure it's full width. So the widgets you can use currently has to do with the archive. You have to make sure that it has the name archive in it or it's using an ACF field. So what do I mean? You can actually use either an archive title that will make sure you're pulling in the right title. It will come with category, column, and whatever. But to get rid of this category name, just go to the wrench icon and then choose to say no. And then you get your category name. If you don't want to use the archive title widget, you can use a heading widget or whatever widget you want. But make sure you're choosing the archive title dynamic tag. Let me delete this. And I'll show you with a heading widget. Same thing, dynamic tags. And this time you have to choose the archive. So this is archive. These are the things that you can pull. And we're going to be pulling in the archive title. It will come with the same category. I'll change that range icon, turn it off. And then we can choose the HTML tag we want. Let me just say H3 in this case and publish it. So if you go back, you see it's going to be pulling in all of my category titles. But let me now add in an image as well. So I'll go back in there. And this time, let me drop in an image widget. So image. Now I'll choose the dynamic tag. And this time you have to make sure you're choosing the category image. Any other one here will not work. Only the category image and ACF related fields that will work. So go to the WooCommerce and choose the category image. So when we publish this and go back, you can see it's pulling through the image. I didn't put images for some of them. Uh, that's why some of them are blank. But the ones that have images, the images are showing up. If you want to see how you can make a breakable image with dynamic fallback, I'll leave a link to the video where I, that I discussed using dynamic shortcodes. You can go and check it out. But if you want to add a static image as a fallback image, let me see if you can do it. I'm not sure you can even do it. You come to the image and it doesn't even give you an option to choose a fallback image. So you have to go through the long process of basically going to the advanced tab and trying to use the display conditions to show an image if there is no image. Maybe Elementor will look into it and come up with an update soon. But for now, you don't have the option to choose a fallback image when you're trying to use the category image. So this is already a bit of a, an issue, but I think that will be fixed probably before the release of the final version. So that's it for products. So you can add a link as well. So let's say for whatever reason you want to link the entire card. So let me go to the card itself and then go to the additional options and then choose the HTML tag as an A tag. Then you can now choose the link and the link you have to make sure it is the archive. So archive URL, so you can choose that. That will now link this card to the archive page where you can now see like I showed you in the Nike example where you can now see the list of all your products and then you can add in filters to that archive page. Make sure you've styled the archive page however you like and then it will come up this way. But for this example, I'm not going to be showing you how to do that. But that's how you can get the archive URL. Typically, people have different ways of adding the link to the entire card. I'll leave a link to four ways you can do it in the description so you can go and check them out. And that's it for the product. But what if we don't want to use products, you want to use posts? It also works. So what do I mean? Let me save and back. And this time, let's say I want to use my posts and I want to show some ACF fields as well. So let me go back to the dashboard and then I'll go to posts and categories. And you see, I have a list of categories for my posts. And then within those categories, I used ACF to add in some text as well as a featured image. So now let's see if we can pull in this dynamic data successfully 
into our loop grid. So I'll go back to the loop grid. Let me refresh the page to make sure that everything is pulling in well. Then this time now, I'll change it from product taxonomy to the post taxonomy. So when you come to post taxonomy, see it's already pulling in my post taxonomy correctly, spots and everything. Then because that's the archive title that is pulling it, but because I use category image, which is specifically for WooCommerce, that's why it's not showing up anything as an image. But we can easily change that now. But let me show you. You can go to query and you can change the source from categories to tags. Or if you have any other taxonomy that is attached to your post, it will show up here as well. So this time we're using the categories. Let me go back to the layout and edit the template. Let me save it. And this time all I have to do is just change the dynamic tag from the category image. Just remove that and I'll change it dynamic tag again. And this time it's an ACF field. So that's what I'm going to use an ACF. Then I'll choose the wrench icon and choose the field that I want. In this case, it was the featured image for my post. So that's post featured image. I had to pull in the featured image and then I can add a fallback. So let me just add in a fallback. That is a good thing about this one. So just put LinkedIn fallback. So now when I publish it and save and back, as you can see, I forgot to put featured image for those two. That's why they're showing the LinkedIn, but the others have the featured image coming in correctly. And I can also pull in all the rest of the ACF fields. So go back in there and let me just add another maybe text editor widget. Then within the text editor widget, I just use the dynamic tags. And this time I have to go to ACF because it's an ACF meta field. So under ACF, I will choose ACF field, choose the wrench icon, change the key to whatever the key is for my post. So the post had the post category extras and that is the test. So that's the value I'm going to pull in now. So let me publish it and then save and back. The first two don't have those content as well. But you see the rest have, this one had singer, major and the rest of them. So you see, it's pulling in your ACF field properly. So the only limitations right now are number one, it doesn't really support third party, the custom field. So like jet engine, pods and all the rest of them, they are not fully supported yet, but hopefully either before the release of the 3.21 or maybe in the next update, they will support other fields and other custom post types because right now it's only supporting the taxonomy that is attached to posts. But I think they are working on it already. So maybe in the next release of the beta version, they will have added the proper support. But I'm just going to sh share with you now what we have so far in the first beta release. And that is it. So there are other things that we added. You can check out the full list of things that we added. When you go to GitHub, I will leave a link to the GitHub repository here. That's where you can go and check for all the information you want in terms of feature requests, bug reports, things like this. Whenever there's any update, it always comes into their GitHub repository. So that's where you go and check and see the full list of things that they added for the free version and for the pro version. So I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching. Please do leave a like, share the video, write in the comments what features you would like to see in Elementor, as well as what kinds of tutorials you want me to cover in my future videos. Right now I'm working on a big video, but I'm waiting for some updates for some builders and then I'll be able to do another accessibility update video in the future. So until next time, I'll see you. Stay safe. Bye.